Another method for determining stability of closed loop systems is to use Nyquist diagrams. Nyquist diagrams are based on conformal mapping. In conformal mapping, you map one curve through a function to another curve. This curve is in the complex plane, so to do the mapping we would take each point on the curve, put it into the function that will result in another complex number, and we'll plot the resulting complex number. We'll end up with another curve C2. If we do the mapping from C1 through f of s to C2, and C1 does not pass through any of the poles or zeros of f of s, you can see that's a problem because if it passes through a pole, then the curve that it maps into would be infinite. So, so when restriction is C1 doesn't pass through any poles or zeros f of s, then C2 will encircle the origin n times where n is equal to z, which is the number of zeros of f of s inside of C1, and p is the number of zeros of f of s inside of C1. This is also called the principle of the argument. You can look that up in your text. Note that n can be positive or negative. If it's positive, that means that the encirclements are in the same direction as C1. If it's negative, the encirclements are in the opposite direction. You can see here I've drawn the curve in the opposite direction just as an example. Here's an example. I'm going to map the curve in red here through my function 1 over s plus 2. So the curve starts at this point, which is minus 1 plus 1i goes over to minus 3 plus 1i and then around. I take each one of those points and I substitute them into 1 over s plus 2. I can predict the number of encirclements I will have after I've mapped the curve if I follow the formula. n is equal to z minus p, and in this case, z is equal to 0. There are no zeros in the function. And p is the number of poles inside the curve. Well, this has one pole at minus 2, and it happens to lie inside the curve. So p is equal to 1. That means that n will be equal to 0 minus 1, or we would expect one encirclement of the origin in the clockwise direction because n is minus 1. The resulting curve is shown here. Here's how I did this, is I just took the points on this red curve, I substituted them into the equation, and then plot the corresponding ports on the purple curve. Some examples. Let's take this point right here. That corresponds to minus 1 plus i. I substitute minus 1 plus i in, and I have 1 over minus 1 plus i plus 2, and the result is 0.5 minus 0.5i, which corresponds to that point right there. Let's pick another point, minus 3 plus 0i. I substitute that in. I get 1 over minus 3 plus 2. That gives me minus 1, which is this point right there. And you would continue doing that for all the points on the red curve, and you would find that it mapped into the purple curve. That's the basis for the Nyquist method that we're going to use. Now we need to take that one step further to make it useful for control systems. I am interested in determining whether the closed loop system shown here is stable or not. If I follow through with the math and we represent g as the ratio of two polynomials, an n polynomial and a d polynomial, the closed loop system can be written like this. And I'm interested in the closed loop characteristic equation, which is d plus n. Now note that if I write 1 plus g, g is the open loop plant, that can be written as n plus d over d. And if I do the Nyquist on 1 plus g, then I would be looking at the formula n is equal to z plus p. z are the number of zeros, that's right here. p are the number of poles, that's right here. The final thing I need is a contour to map, and I'm going to use this contour here, which is the entire right half plane. And what I want to find out is how many of the roots of n plus d, that is z, how many z's exist inside of here, because that will tell me the number of 
unstable poles of g over 1 plus gh. I'm going to do one last trick, as you might call it, and instead of mapping my contour here of the right half plane through 1 plus g, I'm going to map it just through g and then shift the whole thing by minus 1. So in the end, this is what I'm left with. Given the transfer function g, I can determine the number of unstable closed loop poles by looking at the Nyquist diagram. To do the Nyquist diagram, I map all of the values of this contour here, which encompasses the entire right half plane, through g. That will result in another contour. I look at the new contour, and it will follow this formula where n is the number of clockwise encirclements of the minus one point, z is the number of roots of n plus d in the right half plane, and n plus d corresponds to the closed loop characteristic equation. So z tells me the number of unstable poles. p is the number of roots of d in the right half plane. That corresponds to the number of poles of G, the open loop system, that are in the right half plane. Here's a simple example. The transfer function is 1 over S plus 1, and I want to know what happens when I put this in closed loop feedback. Well, you should know from your experience with Bode plots and with root locus that the system will not be unstable, but let's see what Nyquist says. If I map this through the contour shown here, I get the contour shown in blue. The minus one point is over here, so there are no encirclements of the minus one point. The total number of p roots of the open loop system in the right half plane, well, everything here is stable, so there are no roots in the right half plane, so this is also zero, which means that z is zero too, indicating that there are no roots of the closed loop system also in the right half plane. Here's a little more complicated example. My transfer function is s minus 6 over s plus 1. My question is, what happens when I put this in unity feedback? Well, I'm just going to do the math here so we can know ahead of time. If I do this in unity feedback, then the closed loop characteristic equation is s plus 1 plus s minus 6. And that gives me a pole at s is equal to 5 halves. This is positive, which means that the system will be unstable. Let's see what the Nyquist diagram tells me. If I take this transfer function and I map it through my Nyquist curve that encompasses the entire right half plane going clockwise, the resulting curve is shown here in purple. You can see it has one clockwise encirclement of the minus one point. Z, the number of unstable poles of the closed loop system, will be n, the number of clockwise encirclements of the minus one point, in my case it's one, plus p, the number of unstable poles of the original open loop transfer function, that's zero because the only pole I have is s plus one, which is stable. That means that z would be equal to one, which means I have one unstable pole of the closed loop system, which is indeed the case. One last example, my transfer function is 10 over s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 3. The question is, when I put this in unity feedback, is the system stable or not? I can do the Nyquist diagram of this. The resulting purple curve is shown here. There are no encirclements of the minus 1 point, zero encirclements. The num P, the number of unstable poles in the open loop system, is zero. Therefore, z is equal to zero, or there are zero unstable poles for the closed loop system. Right now, the Nyquist diagram is not very useful because you'd say, why would I go through the trouble of mapping this contour when all I'd have to do is solve for the roots of the equation? Well, the Nyquist diagram, like the Bode diagram, can also give you information about phase and gain. If you multiply a transfer function by a gain, it simply scales the Nyquist diagram. So if you look at this Nyquist diagram, you can see that it's got a loop right here. And if I were to scale the whole system multiplied by some factor, eventually that loop would go out like this. And then indeed the system would encircle the minus one point. So my question is how big would I have to make it? And you could do this Nyquist diagram in MATLAB and then measure the distance out here and scale. And you would find that somewhere around a gain of 6.5, the Nyquist diagram would look like this.
This is with k is equal to 6.5. n is one clockwise encirclement of the minus one point. p, the number of unstable poles of the open loop system, well, that's still zero. And that gives me z is equal to one, which means the system has one unstable pole for the closed loop system. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of key points. When doing Nyquist diagrams, we're going to use MATLAB to draw the Nyquist diagrams. Second, the Nyquist diagram is very closely related to the Bode diagram. In fact, if you look at the Nyquist contour, part of the contour goes up the imaginary axis. That corresponds to frequencies in the Bode diagram. So the portion of the Nyquist that goes up this imaginary gives us the same complex values as for the Bode. In the Bode, we plot the magnitude and phase shift of those complex values. In the Nyquist, we plot the actual complex values on the complex plane. Third, a Bode plot must have stable open loop poles and zeros. Otherwise, you have non-minimum phase system and the Bode plot is much more complicated to do. So when we do a Bode plot, the open loop system has to have poles and zeros which are stable. In the case of the Nyquist, we don't have to have that. Third, if you scale the Nyquist diagram until the Nyquist diagram encircles the minus one point, you have the gain margin of the system. Similarly, if you rotate the Nyquist diagram until it encircles the minus one point, that gives you the phase margin for the system.